need your accountant to tell you what your, I think, form 941 is or whatever. And if you have that to report, the rest of it is pretty easy. We, we, I don't know if you were on last week, we had an hour of people going back and forth with questions that they couldn't answer and couldn't figure out how to fill out the form or weren't getting answers. And uh, I wish I was on that call. I, I, was, I was actually mad at myself for postponing filling out that application. I was like, if I would have known that this is all I had to do, you know, I would have did it day one. And my accountant sent it to me day one that, that it was available. And I waited two weeks for it. So. Wow. All right. It's three o'clock. Um, we got a lot to cover today. I'm really excited I'm about today. So I want to get moving. Um, so let, um, let's get started with um, Kathy Haddad is going to give us our uh, mortgage minute or mortgage few minutes. Um, what's going on, Kathy? Hi, everybody. Yeah, so it looks like, you know, as I had said last week, things are starting to ease up a little bit again. Uh, I feel like the market's definitely heating up. There's been lots of offers getting accepted. Uh, one of the things to keep in mind, I, I approved four loans that got denied recently at other banks. So if you have a situation, obviously I'd love you to refer me every deal, um, but when you also do have the situation where your deal's going sideways, remember that every investor is different. They have different overlays. Um, we sell direct to Fannie Mae and Freddie, so we don't have as many overlays as most other companies, plus we sell to so many different investors. Um, and also our expertise of knowing guidelines and figuring out ways to make sure that the we're getting all the information that we need so that we can give a fair decision when we're pre-approving our clients. And um, also, if you are still in the market of looking to refinance, this is the prime time to do it. Interest rates are so low right now that you can save yourself some money, especially while you know, things are you know, slowing down a little bit for you. It would be good to save some clients. I actually just did a refinance for a couple of the realtors and saving them hundreds of dollars a month, thousands of dollars a year. So just you know, keep that in mind when you're looking and thinking of refinancing. Right. Oh, can you probably hear me? Should I should unmute myself before I start talking. Um, all right. Um, anybody have any questions for Kathy related to mortgages before we move on? Well, yeah. I, uh, sorry, guys. Uh, I'm a new agent in here at Cal Williams at Park Hughes. Just want to introduce myself, Vasco Janeski. And uh, actually, I was, uh, hi, guys. And I was, uh, yeah, I was. Uh, I was wondering if we have anybody in-house that I can use, you know, for mortgages and stuff, but good seeing Kat is it's, uh, dealing with that kind of stuff. So I'm happy to see that and work with, uh, with that in the future. Yeah, we have a few in-house companies, Atlantic Home Loans, um, and uh, Kathy is their uh, top uh, person there, but they have a lot of great reps. There's a different one, I think, in each office. And then we also work with a company called Bond Street. Um, so um, well, I'm sure Kathy would be happy to help you out. Hey, Kathy, I'll, vouch for, I'll vouch for Kathy and a very recent buyer. So. <laughs> Aww, thank thank you. you. Hey, Kathy, what are your jumbo rates looking like these days? With like an 80-20 loan to value? Yeah, so jumbo rates, you know, we definitely have limited investors. The requirements on jumbo is still a little bit more stringent. I would say in the mid threes right now for jumbo, conforming loans are lower. The interest rates, you're looking between 3%, 3 and eighth on a conforming loan. Um, but that's basically what we're looking at on Jumbo. So rates are still very low. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Thank you, Kathy. Um, let's, uh, let's get started. We have Michael Brand on today. Uh, you, I think I've already heard you speaking, Michael, so we know you're there. And we I'm all not shy. We have JP. <laughs> Hello. Are you unmuted, JP? Yes, I am. JP, so, what's up, man? How are you? I'm all right. So do, uh, the plan is to do a deep dive. JP has uh, agreed to, uh, to, to open up and let us dig into his business and go through it, you know, step by step. And uh, I think it'll be great for JP, but I think it's going to be great for all of you. And, you know, if you think this is helpful, you know, Michael has trained all the team leaders on um, doing exactly this kind of assessment. So, you know, definitely give your team leaders a call or shoot them a text or an email and, and schedule a similar session. Um, for yourself uh, as soon as possible. So I think at that point, I'll turn it over to uh, Michael. Awesome. Thank you, Al. And uh, know, guys, that this is a business consultation. Uh, this, this we call the 30-30-40 consultation. Does anyone know what I mean by 30-30-40? Our team leaders definitely do. Team leaders do. Alyssa, you want to share the, the, what 30-30-40 means? Yeah, so the 30-30-40 is pretty much a, a basic guideline of 
how to margin your business as a top producer. Um, and there are some, some changes that can be made as you're moving up. But if you look in the MREA, there are different guidelines of what you should expect for expenses, cost of sales, and profit. So that's essentially what the 30, 30, 40 is. And for someone like JP, who's a much higher producer, we expect the margins to be a little bit different than what we would see for, say, a $5 million producer. So in the MREA, the, the concept is 30% should go to your cost of sales, 30% should go to your expenses, which leaves you 40% in profit. Now I say that, but in our market, it could be very hey, hey, different. Michael, I think we have some uh, non-KW folks on the call. So what's the MREA? So MREA is a millionaire real estate agent. So a lot of our training is all from the millionaire real estate agent book. Um, you know, Gary Keller did a series of interviews back in the early 2000s. He interviewed about a thousand people from all across the country, from a bunch of different real estate companies on, on best practices in the business. And that's kind of where all of the concepts of the millionaire real estate agent come from. So this 30, 30, 40 means you should be able to have 40% net profit on your business. Now I say that, but in, in our world, we actually have a higher net profit because our average price is a lot higher than most of the country. Um, we don't need as many admins uh, or buyer's agents as they might need some results. So for instance, to do um, $40 million in sales in some areas of Texas, that might be um, you know, 250 transactions a year. To do 40 million a year in sales up here, it could be as little as 40 to 45 houses. So, so, so that being said, um, the, the, I'll, I'll use a quick example. Back years ago, I remember we had Chris Heller and Chad Goldwasser. Chris and Chad were the two top agents in the country. And, uh, and, and they, they both did about $180 million a year in sales. Well, Chris was in San Diego, California. His average price was $750,000. Um, uh, Chad was in Austin, Texas. His average price was one sixty. So Chris did his $180 million by selling you know, 200 homes a year uh, with a team of nine. Chad did his 180 million by selling about 1200 homes a year with a team of 25. So again, those two businesses are going to have very different margins. So the 30, 30, 40 is kind of a concept knowing up here, our expenses could be lower to service the same amount of business that uh, we might have in different parts of the country. Make sense. So, so, so that being said, this is a business consultation between me and JP. Um, and, and I've told him that I may ask some questions, that would be very natural in a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And it might feel a little bit awkward here with a group of other people listening to the, the inner workings of his business. So I kind of gave JP an out. If I ask him anything that he thinks is a little bit too sensitive to talk about on this call, he is able to take a pass. Make sense? So I promise JP, I'll try not to go too personal. Sound good? You can go personal. It's all, all right. right. Let's do it. So JP, <laughs> thanks for taking the time to chat. Thanks for That's having me. So, so, you know, again, the, the goal here, JP, in this conversation is to figure out um, ways we can increase your profit you know, at the end of the day, increase your bottom line. Because I think it's safe to say in the last eight weeks, um, what you're expecting to earn in, in your real estate business is probably a little bit different right now than it was just six or eight weeks ago, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, have you been affected by, by COVID-19, coronavirus? And all? Well, the majority of my business is in New York, so the the ability to show was is very limiting and, mm -hmm. and so yeah you know for the first time really in real estate i felt um i felt stressed about my budget you know like i i know that the month before you know when i'm thinking about what i'm i haven't fired my admins or put the you know be, i just it's, are, are they on this call just so we know in advance um darlene <laughs> may be listening in somewhere i don't think ronnie is um, but I haven't, I didn't even know it was under consideration that I was going to get fired. What? <laughs> <laughs> Awkward. I, um, I just felt we, we started so strong. We had such, we had an amazing February. I think we did. I, I know that in terms of earned income, it was like $110,000 by the end of February. And I was like, we're going to do it. We're going to get our, my goal. My goal was I, all I wanted to do this year was 30 mil because last year I really missed. Um, last year I had a very strange year with a lot of under contracts falling in September. And I was like, we're gonna crush 2020. And we started off doing it. Yep. So, so let, me, let me stop you there for a second. So I, I got a piece of paper, I'm drawing two columns. The left side says BC, before COVID. 
the, the right side says AC after COVID. So, so what I just heard you say is your goal for the year, back when you created your goals for the year, was to sell $30 million worth of real estate. That is correct. Um, is that still your goal today? So there's a part of me, there's a part of me that still has that goal, okay? There's a part of me, but I'm also realistic that if I miss it, obviously I'm not going to beat myself up. This, when we were, I'll tell you now, I've already had five or six listings that we had teed up, signed and everything. And they were higher end for me yeah. um, that have said, you know what, we're going to wait this one out because we don't want people coming in our house. Okay, so, so, so for the sake of this conversation, I love your, um, your positive energy that you're not going to change your goal. For the sake of this conversation, because we're talking about your bottom line, I want to err on the side of being conservative. So, so, so based on what's happened the last six weeks, what, what, what's a realistic number to, to revise to of what you're, what you're hoping to sell this year? Because again, what you can afford to spend is in direct proportion to what you earn. So I don't want to set your expense budget at 30 million and have you come in at 20 million. Uh, I'd, I'd rather set your expense budget on a lower number and hopefully I'll perform it. I would say 40 million, Michael. <laughs> what happened? Can, can, can you borrow your checkbook, Mr. Donahue? Sure. It, it, it cut out for a little bit on, on my end, but I'll tell you that 20 would be, if I hit 20, I wouldn't be disappointed. Okay. So let's just look at that for a second. So, you know, just, just to give you an idea, is it safe to say your average commission is about two and a half percent? Yes. All right. So at 30 million, you were projecting on bringing in about 750,000 in gross commission income. At 20 million, that's going to be more like 500,000. Make sense? Right. Yep. So from the 30, 30, 40 concept, if we only have 30% to, 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 to use for expenses, well, at 30 million, your expense budget there could have been as high as 225,000. Well, at 500,000, um, 30% is more like 150,000. So based on what's happening, uh, we, we may have to try to trim as much as $75,000 out of your expense budget in order to maintain your profitability this year. Make sense? Yep. That's so, a it's a big number. It, 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 it's a big number. That's why I want to err on the side of being cautious. Um, I, I want you to kind of set this year um, as a best case scenario, because again, we could always ramp spending back up in the fourth quarter um, if, if things are better than expected. Now, let me just give you a quick words of thought here. I think we're going to have a really strong second half of the year. I think so, we're going to have a gangbuster second half of the year. For, for, and I'm doing a call Wednesday on this at one o'clock when we talk about the market, especially in North Jersey, where if I look at the GSMLS, uh, the GSMLS over a 60 day span is seeing 75% homes coming on the market, 75% less homes. So let's just say GSMLS lists 10,000 homes a month. It's more like 7,500, but for the sake of math, let's use the 10,000. That means we've got 7,500 less homes coming on the market in those two months, which is 15,000 less homes here in the market. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, so what normally would have come on over two, two and a half months, I think the large majority of those are still going to come on the market. You know, perhaps 60, 65% are still going to hit the market, but instead of spreading it out over two months, it's going to hit the market over a three to four week time frame. And, and those buyers, and again, our under contracts are down by about 60%. Um, which right there tells us demand is outpacing supply. Yep. So our, our under contract is down by 60%. So I see a backlog of buyers also wanting to come out and buy. Uh, and then, then what's going to happen is there were going to be people that weren't originally going to sell this year that are going to end up selling. Why? Because they've lost a job and perhaps can't afford their house anymore. Most likely because they're so sick of their freaking house after being quarantined in it for 60 days that they just want to make a change. So, so I, I think we have a very, very solid second half of the year that's going to probably you know, carry us right into the first quarter of next year. So again, I, want to, I, I'm going to, I say that because I want to be conservative uh, in your goals and conservative in your budget. But I think your ability to outperform them in the second half of the year can be really strong. Does that make sense, JP? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So, so we've got about $150,000 expense budget. So we find that the two parts of our expenses where we spend the most money, well, let me ask you, where do you think the, the highest part of your, your expense budget is? Salary. Salary. So, so salaries tend to make up about a third of this expense budget. So if we're saying we have 30% to put toward expenses, about a third of that are people. And now when I say a third, um, the MREA tells us between 10 and 12% of our gross 
10 to 12 percent of our gross is what you can spend on your salary so again if we're trimming back to 150,000 is your expense budget for this year that gives you about fifty thousand dollars you can spend in salaries again are your assistants on this call <laughs> i don't see them but i'll tell you that that would cover like almost one of them like one of them so 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 how much are you spending total on admin right now? Probably 75. Okay, so right now you're about 50% over budget. Now again, this isn't a deal breaker because um, here's the thing that I've been focused on. And my um, quality way, of life is so much higher. Yeah, and it is, and it is. And, and keep in mind, during this time, I've been very conscientious of not wanting to fire anybody. This is not the time where as employers, we ever want to put someone out of a job because this is the time where, you know, let's talk about team building for a second. Team building is, is challenging because you're taking the responsibility for other people's lives into your hands. You're taking responsibility for other people's families into your hands. So this is the time where those people need us the most. So th this is the time where we need to make sure we weather that storm and keep as many people employed as possible. So while we're 50% over budget, we might have some other areas later that we can come in under budget in order to make these salaries not as painful for you. Is that okay? Yeah. All right, so right now we're about 50% over budget with salaries. Well, what do you think the second biggest expense of a real estate business is? Memberships. Like um, I pay for CoStar, LoopNet, MLS fees, uh, uh, other marketing. Uh, those memberships are, are important. Um, I will tell you that the second biggest cost, I'm gonna give you the answer to this question so you can write it down and cheat on the test later, um, yep. is typically marketing and lead generation expenses. I, I, I unfortunately categorize my the websites that are conducive to me doing business as a part of lead gen, which well, I probably, loop that especially would fall in that lead gen category. Right. So, so I, I, I would say that that would definitely be my next largest expense because that would lead gen would be direct mailings, um, any on social media on uh, online advertising that I'm doing, uh, any. If you're, if you're paying for a, a, a CRM of some type in order to manage your, your, your business, manage your relationships, that could very much fall into that category. I, I took that off when I... Uh, what what, what, when, what when, were you paying for your, your CRM? We were only using, we were using Top Producer. Okay. So it was very affordable. You know, we, once Command came in and we thought that there was going to be a website that would work with it, um, we withdrew from Top Producer. We, right now, we still have the, the Top Producer website, which is an, a very small amount. Mm -hmm. But um, looking to transition that into everything into command. Nice. Yeah, because, I mean, in essence, command can potentially save some people a lot of money. Um, you know, I, I talked to an agent. We were just on a call a little bit ago with an agent. Um, he was able to trim his expense budget by $2,000 a month. But by moving into command, I mean, you know, that, that, that's a considerable amount of money. Then when you look at the leads, this isn't a command class. So I'm just going to make a comment and then move on from it. When you look at the leads he's generating, he's able to do it at a fraction of the cost. Because as an individual, it, we're getting pricing if we're spending twenty or $30,000 a year on marketing. Through command, Facebook looks at you as part of the Keller Williams customer, which means we get the pricing of a one and a half to $2 million a month customer. So we're finding that on average, our cost per lead on Facebook is about one eighth of what the rest of the industry is spending because of the fact you're leveraging our size in order to make the incre incremental cost of ads a lot more affordable to you. So yeah. uh, again, we'll do a call on c command on another day, um, but, but ultimately you could save a, a considerable amount of money by, by plugging in the command and using it. Um, so, so I'm taking notes. When you see me looking down, I'm taking notes. I just want you to know that. I, I, I thought you were texting Al that this jackass doesn't know what he's saying. <laughs> Al, is this what you want him to say? Um, he said all. that before the call. Now, now he's sold. He thinks you're doing a good job. <laughs> I'm just keep looking at Resham's face. As long as she's still positive, I'm feeling good about myself. So, um, so, so what, what do you think you're, 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 you're on track to spend this year in marketing? Or what did you spend last year in, in that marketing slash lead generation so I, I, throw, I throw a lot of my expense, all of my expenses are on one card. And so I know that I'm going through about five to six grand a month. That's, that's a real number. Okay. So, I'm actually, I'm pulling up the p &L you sent me because I know you had sent me that. I haven't had a chance to look at it yet. Now, I got to tell you, wow, I, I'm impressed. Do you do this p &L yourself or does, uh, do you have a bookkeeper that does it for you? 
So I do it myself. I'm even more impressed now. Um, and, and so slightly concerned that you might be bipolar. A little bit. <laughs> well, OCD, yeah, definitely OCD. OCD. There's a side of me that, um, but see, what's happened now is that as my business is growing, I'm not, I used, it used to be January 1 or January 3rd. I give myself a day, right, to recover. And then um, on the 3rd, I would just send my P&L to my account and then be done, right? Mm. Now I'm not doing it. So I'm actually, I haven't even submitted 2019 yet. It's May 11th. Gotcha. So I, I, get to, I, I wish you guys could see what I'm looking at out of privacy reasons. I, I'm not going to share it, but you know, he's got his P&L broken out. For instance, so he's got the lead generation internet category. And he could tell you every dollar to the penny he spent on Constant Contact, CoStar, Facebook, GoDaddy, Vulcan, uh, Outbound Engine, Trulia. Um, Outbound Engine's a hefty expense. Uh, Trulia. I and, know I'm able to cut that now. Oh, so that's, that's another $2,100 that, that you spent during this time period on, on that system. Yeah, and, and last year it was more than that. Last yeah. year it was, it was 4000 So I've cut that out. Because you're, you're replacing that with command. So let me ask you, an average of uh, $2 a lead, how many leads do you think you can, you can generate by spending that $4,000 on, uh, on, on lead accelerator or command? I'll take it. <laughs> you know you know, so when you think about it, if you take that money that you spent last year, you're saving and put that $4,000 in, and that could generate you per, perhaps as many as 2,000 additional leads. And, and again, I'm seeing some of those leads coming in at 80 and 90 cents per lead. Um, you know, with I believe two bucks being about the average across the country. So, so, so as we're looking, we've got, you know, so, so marketing, what number do we want to put on uh, your marketing regeneration expense? So I'm saying for print marketing, which, which actually includes sign install, um, it's about 10,000 a year. Okay. And I'm seeing what another 7,000, which you just changed that another 7,000 in online marketing. So we're right. talking about, you know, 17, 18,000. Okay. I'm listen, I'm following your lead on this. Okay. No, 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 I guess. But, 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 but here's the good thing for your assistants that may, may be on the call. Um, the, the, the MRE tells us that you should be spending as much as $50,000 a year in marketing and lead generation. Because again, if you look at marketing lead generation is also about eight to 10% of the GCI. Or, or a third of your, your expense budget should be going to marketing. So in essence, you, you can spend as much as 50, you're only spending 17, so you're underspending by 32,000, which tells me two things. Number one, if we take that 32 underspend and put it up into salaries, you've now just made up your, your gap there. Because okay. you're underspending here, so your assistants are safe for right now. Well, that's good. And that means my customer service is safe for right now because they really help with that. So. Yeah, but, but what I'm also seeing, JP, is probably some missed opportunity here. The, the, the mistake I see realtors make uh, more often than not is they, they don't tell their story. They, they, they don't do a great job of marketing themselves. So oftentimes I'll see an agent that had the best year they ever had, and the next year will be in the gutter. Then another great year, and next year's in the gutter. I'm, I'm going I'm, I'm to admit something, and I'm, I'm actually a little embarrassed by it because I feel like I've elevated so much of my game in the last two or three years in terms of customer service and follow-up and systems. But, in, but I sacrificed what, doing exactly what you said, is, is telling my story. I do a great job telling my story online, mm -hmm. um, but the direct mailings or opportunities to capture neighborhoods or even farming opportunities, I have abandoned. Yep. And in 2019, that number is going to be so low that missed opportunity is like an understatement. Yep. It's like a whole other salary that I've let just given away to someone because yep. someone absorbed that business. So someone, someone got it because you weren't, I mean, I use just listed cards. I mean, I've been in the business now, how long have I been in business? 26 years? 25 years, my, my first year of business was 1995. I got licensed and, and came into business uh, part-time, full-time in 99. And, and I, I've known over these years that listing is contagious. When, when someone lists a home, there end up becoming multiple homes in that neighborhood that end up coming on the market because that first one just kind of got the idea going, everyone else took action. So when, when I say just listed come on the market, then two more listings come up in that neighborhood with three different signs on the property. 
that's how I know that first agent messed up and, yeah. and, and didn't do a good job of letting that neighborhood know that they took a listing because they should have had the first opportunity to catch those next two listings. Exactly. If they were out in front of it and telling that story, door knocking, sending out the just listed, the neighborhood only open house card, um, you know, th things like that. I, I, I'm not, listen, I'm not going to be, um, I'm not going to rah, rah command, but I am going to say that the action plans that are in command right now hold you so, they hold you accountable. And my, uh, my admin, I, I asked her to do like a deep dive into it because with this whole Corona thing, it's an opportunity to get familiar with all the things that are being thrown at us at once. And so she has been doing it and it is working for us. I, I do, I'm going to correct you that for a second. I heard you just say you, you have your admin doing a deep dive in the command. Now, those weren't the words you told me you said to your admin. No, no. I actually <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have out. a great relationship. So I was like, if you don't learn command by the time this virus is over, you're fired. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, but, but again, because you understand it and you know that it can help you. Yeah, and I know that I want to pay and, and, and give her things to do. Um, so it's just, I'm, we, I, I, we all get nervous when we're looking at technology. At, at least we just like, I don't want to look at it. I just, I'm just going to do my business as I do my business. I'm going to keep my head down and stay focused. And then you realize like, for example, she sends out our anniversary card to everyone, right? That's just one of the things on her task list that, I, that I've given her. But in the in the command uh, tasks that we have, there's a reminder for me to, to make a phone call to that client, someone who I haven't touched base with in three, four years. But I did it, referral. Yep. Just like, and I'm not a caller. Like I just, I think it's so, I'm not salesy like that. Hey, how you doing, you know? But I was just like, you know what? We haven't spoken in a while. It's that, it's the month you bought the home. I just, how's, how's it going, man? Tell me a little bit, catch me up. Oh my God, by the end of the thing, it was a referral. And I called up my admin. I was like, you see, it works. <laughs> it works. It's number one. And, and that's really, last comment on command. Command is designed to be a high touch system to your sphere of influence. So if, if you're not calling four times a year, in addition to what you're doing in command, you're not using it to its fullest ability. So I, I would tell you to make yourself really small and make yourself the biggest real estate professional in it. I, I had a gal, Madeline Diab. Um, she would do about $20 million a year in sales. And her entire system was marketing to 117 people. Just yeah. 117 people. That's it. And she would produce 20 million in sales from that. So command's designed to be a high touch marketing engine to your sphere of influence, to your database, to your past customers and clients. So everyone should be calling their clients this Thursday. Everyone should be calling the clients this Thursday. Why, why do you think you should be calling them this Thursday? I don't know. Is it? Uh, I don't know. What's this Thursday? Is it the 15th? What is it? This Thursday's Red Day. This oh. Thursday's Red Day. I'm not sure what your market centers are doing. We're doing food drives in most of ours. Yeah, and, okay. and we've got agents calling their databases like crazy. And it's, hey, JP, Michael Bevan, Keller Williams, got a minute for a quick business call. Uh, I, I know it's been a while. I'm just making sure, is your family okay? Is everyone safe and healthy? Uh, have you been you know, hopefully unaffected by COVID-19? I'm not sure if you've noticed, but um, there's a lot of people going hungry right now. You know, you know, getting food has been a challenge. The, the lines in some places to get food is an extreme challenge. And uh, what people don't realize that summers are actually the toughest time for food pantries because that's when the kids are out of school. And that's what puts the biggest draw on our local food pantries because many kids only get their meals two a day at school. So, so we're, we're, we're kind of taking a red day uh, opportunity or we'll call our database and see if you are healthy, you are safe and you are fed, if you'd be willing to support the local food pantry by making a small donation, any number that, that works for you in order for us to, our, our goal is to feed 10,000 people. Um, and, and, you know, a little bit can go a long way in helping us achieve that goal. By the way, oh, do you yeah. know anybody that's been affected that is having trouble eating? Because we've also made an agreement that if we come across anyone that's hungry in these calls, then our local food pantry will make sure they get the food they need as well. Make sense? That's awesome. Yeah, I'm having a box out. And so it's that we are supposed to be calling this week. Okay. Um, so, 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 so we Nancy, just, I'm still trying to just get over that you built that big business without calling through to your database. We can just end the call right now. If you just make those calls to your database, you can double your business 
easily. I mean, ju just by doing that. I mean, that's, that's amazing that, that you've built that huge business without doing that. Thank you. I, I don't, I have a, I like, I like my sphere a lot. Like they're, they're really good to me. A few people are very good to me, but what's, what, uh, where I think I'm doing well is my Zillow profile is very strong and my Facebook profile is very strong. And so I have a, a large network there, but because I'm concentrated in one area, Michael, you just said, you know, get small and get large. So I do a lot of business in that Suffren Airmont Montebello market. So I'm number one in my zip code. That has helped me to stay in front of new people. And I think Facebook is keeping me in front of my sphere because, you know, I've got my daughter that I post about. I post about food and sing, whatever. That's just who I am. And I, I feel like I'm connecting that way. But I'll, if I start calling, I'm sure it'll help me more. <laughs> so if, if we were to go through your list of transactions from last year, do you have a broken down from what, what lead sources all those different transactions came from? What percentage came from your, your, your sphere or your Met database? Um, I would say we do. I don't have it. Darlene has it. She keeps a spreadsheet. Um, we ha one of them is source as the t column. And at the end of the year, yeah, we know. Well, the, the reason I asked that question is we want to make sure any dollar you're spending on lead generation is going to the sources that are giving the biggest return. I'll, I'll give you, for instance, uh, I, I was in this consulting relationship with, the, with this guy, Anthony. And, um, and, and I found in our consulting relationship, we spent 75% of our time talking about his strategies for FISBOS, right? That's what he always wanted to talk about, FISBOS, 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 FISBOS. And, and, and Anthony did about $15 million a year in sales. And, and after one year together, we kind of sat down and we said, where'd your business come from? Well, 15% came from FISBOS and 85% came from his sphere. Exactly. And, yeah. and I said to myself and Anthony, I said, what are we doing? Why are we spending all this time on FISBOS? Don't spend another dollar on FISBOS. Let's take all the money you're spending, put it into marketing in your, your, your sphere in your database. He doubled his business in one year. Just because he- Maybe, we, maybe I need to start coaching again. I'd like to double my business. So if, if that's something, you know, I'll just put it out there. <laughs> uh, well, maybe well, it's not in the budget this year, but maybe like in another couple months it will be. Um, well, I maybe, still see you since I stopped coaching a little bit is shaved off each year. Other well, things increased, but volume well, is shaved off. Well, how about we do this, JP, as a thank you for you being my guinea pig today. Yeah. Um, send Emily an email. I'll get you her email address. Have her schedule you for one day a month on my calendar, 30 minutes. We'll, we'll, we'll oh do my one, God. one, one, one day a month it. with uh, high level coaching. Okay. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. As we strategize one month on what you can do for your business. If you don't do that the next month, we're not talking again. I agree. I, I totally understand that. And honestly, that is why I stopped coaching because my accountability was going down. Yep. So I will, I will be accountable now. I'm awesome. probably leveraged for that. So, so Al, make sure he's got, Al, can you just connect him and Emily via email and, and have her schedule that? Um, so, so again, that, that's where I would go to as well. Uh, JP is, is where your business came from, how we can, you know, pretty much divide your money over your key lead generation sources and figure out the best way to spend your dollar to give you maximum return. Make sense? Sure. I would love so, that. So, so based on what we've talked about so far, um, are you comfortable with this conversation? Are you comfortable with the concepts that we're discussing? I'm comfortable. I mean, I, I feel like we haven't really, we didn't dive deep enough into numbers for maybe some of the other people listening. Mm -hmm. I think conceptually we're touching on things that are important, but like as I'm building my team, there was a couple of things that were important to me. The first was, I, when I grew too fast and I went from like 10, 11 million to 15 to 23 or 25 that one year, when I, when I had that huge jump, my customer service level went way down. Mm. And so, you know, I knew that the, the MREA model was like, all right, you have an admin and I had one. Okay. With, with one admin from 10 to three, we were crushing, but we were losing in other ways. So I added another full-time admin and then we, we got to a, a good place and then I, I had to step up the next level. Like, okay, so now I want to introduce a buyer agent. Well, actually, let, 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 let's stop before we leave admin for a second. I'm going to say an admin for just a second. Yeah, yeah. Um, what I heard you say when your business jumped, customer service suffered. I hear that a lot. I, I hear that a lot. And that's because people are typically hiring for where they are as opposed to hiring for where they're going. So I already know my next three hires over the next 12 to 18 months. And I know what milestones have to trigger 
uh, for me to hire that person. So if you wait till you're ready for the second hire, um, it's probably too late. Things have already suffered. So right. you know, we, we can dig into um, uh, building out a world where you hire quicker. Um, but, but, but here's the key. You've also got to change your compensation structure for those hires. So if, if I can ask you, how do you pay your current admin? Well, I pay one biweekly. So one is salaried. Right, this is also for anyone thinking about this. First of all, know this. Take workers' comp on everyone regardless, okay? That cost that, me enough money. I had one that w was a 1099. You need workers' comp on it. Okay? So, so, so let, let's just stop there for a second. If, if you're asking me, hey, do I do 1099 or W-2? Here's the question I would ask you. Can they come and, come and go whenever they want? Michael, you, you cut out. Say it one more time. You, I lost you for a second. If no, I know. It wasn't you. It was me. It was me. It was me. It was you? Okay, yeah. It's not you. It's me. I heard that a lot as a kid. <laughs> um, right my, 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 my formidable teenagers. Um, if you were to ask me, should I order 1099? Should I pay someone 1099 or W-2? Here's, this, here's this, the, the, the scratch test. Can, can they come and go whenever they want and you'll still pay them? Or do you expect them to work certain hours and certain days of the week? Yeah, I expect them to work certain hours and certain so, days. So if, if you're going to put an expectation on them of when they have to work, then they have to be W-2. So I have one, I have one is W-2 and one is 1099. And, 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 and quite honestly, they're both going to be W-2 next year. Yeah, and, and here's the challenge. This exposed a lot of people in the last seven weeks. This exposed a lot of people because someone who was paying an admin as a, as a 1099, um, that person it's couldn't go on. and file for unemployment if they got laid off. You're right. They have, to, they have to apply for the PPP, what I did. Yeah, yeah. Okay? And that's one of the things that was, was frustrating to me because I've been having that conversation and I know that it's a way for them to write off fake expenses or whatever, but the reality is, is that I don't want to tell you what they both work from home, which I got. Now I have them coming in when we were working in the office. I took an office to have them come in and then COVID hit and was like, all right, maybe not, maybe not today. <laughs> so, when, so, so go ahead. Staying on the admins for a second. Um, how much of their compensation is fixed versus variable? At this point, it's all fixed. All right. So, so I want you to write this down, write this down overpay on money you don't have overpay on money you don't have what i mean by that is um i would want my first assistant um you know on a real estate team to make between 50 and 60 thousand dollars a year okay um that that would that to me is what that person needs to make for me to have the quality and the other thing to write down is overpay for talent overpay for talent if there's any area worth stretching your budget, it's, it's going to be on a talented person because talent makes our life a lot more fun and a lot easier. So that, that first person, I want them to make 50. Do you think I'm going to give them a $50,000 salary? No. I might give them a 30 to a $35,000 salary and make all the other money bonus driven. Because here's the thing. I'm looking to grow a big business. So for me to grow a big business, I need to attract people that want to help grow a big business. So I might pay them 30 or 35,000, then set up a bonus structure, set up a bonus structure. So for instance, uh, how many transactions did you do uh, in 2019? 64. And how many was your original goal in 2020? Um, probably like 80, I think. So, so in, that, in, that situ in that situation, I might pay my admin just $100 bonus on the 64 transactions. So right there, $35,000 salary, uh, 64 transactions, another 6,400. So there's about 41,000 right there. That person wants to make another 9,000. Well, I'm looking to increase my transaction by 16, right? So I take the other 9,000 divided by 16 and I might go up to $500 bonus on so any transaction. Beyond that point you're saying? Yep. So, so it would be a hundred off of the first 64. And then 500 after uh, on everything after 64. Why? Because I haven't done 80 transactions yet. So every dollar from 64 to 80 is money I don't have today. So if this person can help me get those deals done and, and systematize myself enough to help me grow my business by 15, 20%, I'm going to overpay them on money I don't have. I'm going to pay them a bigger bonus on new transactions. I'll keep in mind every year that resets. 
So if I hit 80 this year, it might be 100 on zero to 80. And but, you'll bump, but you'll bump her base, though. No. No, you well, won't. Because I, 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 I want... the fixed cost associated with that position until yeah. your team gets to another level. Yep. And, 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 and honestly, so every single person I hire, every role, from director of agent services to MCA to um, compliance, at the end of their first year of employment, I give everybody the same test slash question. I ask them, would you like the standard 3 to 4% cost of living raise? Or would you like to have compensation based on performance and performance of our company? So I'll often give them the opportunity to get into the profit bonus environment uh, or just get a bump. Now, someone who just gets that bump might see an, an additional $2,000 a year. Someone who wants to be a builder that says, I'm okay with the bonus structure will typically make five to 6,000 more than next year. But yeah. because it, it, it's bonus driven. So I want people that think about growing. I want to surround myself with people that think about growing that want to be tied to some incentive based on our growth because then our conversations change. Absolutely. And uh, it also, it gets them, it gets them committed to a bigger vision. That's yeah. the thing. And that and, keeps people inspired. And, th and that's what keeps people hungry to come to work every day. Knowing it, gets that. Them, it gets them thinking, what can I do today to help JP's business grow? Yeah. What does your world look like when you wake up and have two people thinking to themselves, what can I do today to help JP's business grow? You know what happens? JP's business grows. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, so I, I would be a little bit more conservative with, with the fixed cost and then add a little bit of a kicker, as long as it's a regular enough kicker uh, in, in order to, uh, to, 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 and have you have them. to stay committed to it. That's the thing. It's like, because I had such a, I had great years when I was killing myself and this is what I struggle with right? When, when I had my one admin and we were working, she was working 10 to three and she was lower on salary. I was yep. paying her 14 grand a year, but I was selling 25 million, $24 million worth of real estate. I was swimming in it. Yeah. And that, but I was killing myself and I really wasn't, and my daughter was just getting born. And I was like, you know, I can't do this. Right. So I started, I, first of all, we bumped her up. Um, she wouldn't, she didn't want more hours. So we hired another one. But, now but, 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 but stop there for a second. I think you, you just touched on an point, important thing. I want to make sure they heard it. When you hire part-time first, rarely does the part-time ever become a full-time. So if you say, I'm only going to invest in a part-time person now, when I make more money, I'll, I'll move them to full-time. I've almost never seen it. Someone who accepts a part-time role is typically, there's a reason they're working part-time. So, you know, e either commit part-time or full-time, but don't think you're going to change that person. You'll probably need to hire a second, like, like you're saying you did. Yeah, well, that's, that's what wound up happening, right? We went from, you know, 10 to 3 was what she was going to do. And she had her yeah. reasons, you know, her, she, she wanted to wait till her kids were in college. And I just think that was comfortable. And, and you know what? The best thing I did, I hired someone else full-time, and I love it. And it changed my life. My quality of life went way up. Okay, but it affected my bottom line because I didn't grow the way I expected to grow. And now we're, now we're set for growth. Now this, all the systems are in place. Everything is where we need to be. And I'm excited. Now COVID hit, okay, so I'm a little frustrated about it, but still I wanna, I've always struggled with finding a way to truly incentivize someone to work hard, yep, right? Yep. Because cause sometimes I don't wanna just bump the salary. I feel like, there's only so much I can do until I get the numbers. I love what you, you offer and I appreciate it. And I'm going to find a way to implement it. I know that. Yep. So and, and the other thing I want you to think of when you're thinking, uh, and so I'm going to wrap up this, this part. We're going to have a few minute conversation on your cost of sales. Then I'm going to open up to questions because I got a hard stop at about five of. Um, the other thing I want you to think about is, is when you're thinking about compensation, compensation is more than salary. So on the offer letter, I'll put salary, I'll put bonus, I'll put their computer that I'm buying for them. If they're renting, if they have a desk space, I'm putting what that desk space costs. I, I, I'm putting whatever coaching I'm going to put in place for them. Uh, if, if I'm going to allow them the opportunity to come to Family Reunion or Mega Camp, I'm going to make that part of the compensation structure. So, so know that compensation is a lot more than salary and there could be a lot more value. I, my team leader that I hired uh, about a year ago, he's big into education. So he had some milestones to hit that would cause me to pay for big ticket education items. Last event I sent him to cost $6,000. Um, but he's got incentives to go to John Maxwell's exchange <laughs> and right. maps recharge because that was a big thing for him. Um, he's got a, a number when he hits it, 
I'm going to send him and his wife to date with Destiny with Tony Robbins, which is a, a fifteen thousand. Is that the PG one? That's a uh, big no, no. He's he's going to he's going to Florida. <laughs> he's going to Parkle Island. He's not going to Fiji. But, 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 but again, but when you're going through the, the, the queer visioning with someone, you're going to tap into what drives them and what powers them. Then you're going to set up a compensation structure that's going to reward what they're passionate about. Make sense? Yeah. No, How are you doing, it, Colleen Kossoff? I see a smile up there. You doing good? You're, you're killing it. And I got to tell you, this it's it just making me think about compensation, like we, compensation for us involved sick days vacation you yeah. know so those things were important because vacation to to one of my admins is an important thing she likes that time with her family i love that i don't do that right so yeah, well but, but here's the thing compensation is unique and we've got a process we teach with career visioning to help us get into relationship with the candidate that, that we're, we're, we're meeting and understand who they are so anyone can offer sick days and vacation days anyone can offer salary what can you offer that makes you look different than any other person they could ever possibly be in business with? I keep a budget for spa trips. That way, if someone's having a tough week or a challenging week, I could say, hey, here's a $200 gift card. Go pamper yourself for a day. Um, because those are those unique touches that not every employer looks at. So think, think to yourself, what can I offer in compensation that makes me different from everybody else? I'll tell you what you just did, what you just said. It's corny, right? Got me a little emotional. And I'll tell you why, though. Be because my team, at, at one point or another, would love for me to reach out like that on a personal level to say, hey, you know, I know your mom is sick. Go take this day. I haven't done it. You know, a phone call, yes. But I haven't gone the extra mile. I'll be accountable to it. I know who I am. And, and that would, I think that really separates the good bosses from the great bosses. You know, certain people, certain people will, will kind of lead from fear, right? I always, I always, when I talk, I have a, a brother, a couple friends and I always say, look, my cousin is the, is the CEO of Deutsch Marketing. My, the guy that my dad worked for ran a huge distribution business. Right. Both of them highly successful. My marketing cousin loved by everyone that worked for her, right? My dad's boss feared by everyone at mm -hmm. work for her. Both are effective, but who do you want to be? Which one do you want to be in life, yep. right? And I was just like, that is, is something that will speak to me. So thank you. Awesome. I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad hey, to be Hey, helping. Mike, did yeah. you cover, I was just thinking something. We have a, a lot of people on from other companies here. Did you cover the capped model? You know, I'm thinking about how people are thinking, well, you know, these Keller Williams agents are spending all this money on marketing, but it's I don't have to spend anything for marketing. You know, one of the things is we don't have that 6% that goes on forever for marketing. So it's, it's a capped model. It makes it a little bit easier to, to, to figure out your, your expenses. Well, so, 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 so let's talk about cost of sales for a moment. So cost of sales are the expenses you have that are transactional based. So, so it's funny when, when I say what, what your biggest expense is, um, in the traditional world, someone who's at Caldwell Banker or Weicker, I was a Weicker guy for 12 years. Someone who's at a traditional company, their biggest expense is actually their broker. So let's take your business, JP, you know, I, I, on a 20, let's look at that $30 million a year. Let me tell this story, Michael. I sure, want to sure. tell it because Go. this story is the reason why I came to Keller. Okay. I was stuck with my other broker at 11 or 12 million for four to five years, begging for education, begging for a way to grow my business. And I couldn't do it. When I was doing that 11 or 12 million, I was paying them $127,000 a year in commission that went to the broker. So just by coming over and you know what in that company leads were kind of around robin if you didn't pick up or claim that lead it went to the next person i moved over to keller and i went from 11 or 12 million to 15 and a half to 21 to 25 then 23 and 22 okay well, you must have paid us a heck of a lot more money then to give you all that help and support if you paid them that much you let me just tell you money. the 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 part I was so mad at myself. I, Sally, I thought I saw Sally. Was she here? Sally gave me, hey, Sally. I had met with her. Love you, Sally. Once. And Sally had said to me, because I really loved my broker. She was like a second mother to me. And Sally said this to me. I'll never forget it. 
she said, do you love her more than your family? <laughs> ooh, ooh, and I Sally. was like, Sally, that's so real. Because she was coming from the right place. I had a young, I was going to have a young daughter soon. And we we're going to be saving for college. And all of the things, what could you do with that extra money? And I, one, I, I bought a bigger house year one, just with the extra savings. But most importantly, I had my leads coming to me. And that ability to have control of my leads grew my business so quickly that, that I needed to hire a second admin. That's how fast I grew. So, so I don't want to leave something. There's something that I didn't want to spoke about. You talked about a cat, but I was talking about my buyer agents. Anan is on the call, one of the buyer agents that just worked with me. And Mike, could you? Could yeah, you yes, we're, we're, we're going to that real quick right now, but I want to finish this cost of sales thought. So okay. JP's world at 11 million, he paid his broker 100 and how much? 27. 127,000 at 11 million. At 25 million a year, how much are you paying your broker? 37. 37. Or 40. 40, really, because you 40 have 40 with the royalty. So the most you'll pay us is 40,000. 40, Again, not you, counting you, my profit share earnings. You went from 11 million to 25 million, and your cost of sales to your broker went from 120,000 120, down to 40. So right. the only, I want to help you build a big team. I want to help you build he, made Michael, he can easily, and he may already, a lot of agents get that down to zero, you know, with profit share, with disappearing yep. cap, with, with uh, title distributions, with home and auto distributions. A lot of agents on this call pay, you know, we pay them to work with us. They don't pay any cap yep. at all by the time they get all of their distributions. So, 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 you know, in, in our world, um, it's about helping people build the big businesses because if, if I can help you build a big business, then you can attract more people and you can reinvest more in your business and make your business as big as you want to go. Cause here's the thing you investing in your business is going to bring you a much higher return than expecting the broker to do it for you. Make right. sense. So like let's it. spend a quick minute uh, and before we end this call, cause we were talking about cost of sales. So once you cap, you then have the ability to, to repurpose some of that cost of sales. Now that you're not paying the broker anymore, you can now hire a buyer's agent or a listing assistant. So let's have a quick couple minute conversation on how you compensate your buyer's agents and, and people like that. Okay, so this is always, in general, like I have a contract. So typically we, it's a 50-50 split if, I'm generating the lead for them. So that doesn't seem fair, right, to other people who wants to work for that. But what was nice is that if you're getting a new agent or someone who's been in the business three to five years and not earning anything, if there was a way that I could show them, look, you, you made 30 grand, I'm going to make you, I can make you 80,000 or 100,000. But I'm going to change your thinking. You just said, who wants to work for 50%, right? If I'm at Weicker or Caldwell Banker, and I'm, I'm akin to this because I helped create the Weicker Lead Network back in 2001, 2002, if your broker gives you a lead, how much does your broker keep and how much do you get paid? Right, 50% minus their franchise. Right? Well, no, no, no. First of all, you're paying a referral off the top. You're paying a referral off the top of 35, 40%. Yeah. Then you have the, the 60, 65 that back in the beginning that was then split 50, 50 minus the 6%. So if I have an agent that's getting a broker lead at a company with yellow signs, that agent's making 27 to 30%. Right. of the gross. So a 50% of the gross is a much bigger number than what they'd be paying working, uh, working the broker's lead at one of our competitors. It makes sense. Well, you, you, you know that, right? You know that model and, and, and it makes sense. And I'm, I want to kind of incentivize talent and, and, and see and help talent grow. So yep. one of the things like we have in, in my agreement is that if they're bringing me obviously a lead, then the split is higher. Okay. Yep. If I'm giving them the lead, then it's a 50% split. It's, I take half and, and they get half. Okay. And that's basically what's really happening for the most part here is I'm the one generating leads and I'm comfortable with that. And my, and my admins are taking care of back end paperwork, you know, and I'm comfortable with, with that. What I'm uncomfortable with or un, just uninformed about what I could do, what could I do now? Let's just say I get my buyer agent to a certain level. And they're, and they're crushing. And now I want to, I want to elevate them. Like I don't, I, let's just say they started at 50, but they got to a certain threshold and I want to push them to 60. So, so, so let, let's, let's go back one quick second. I always believe it is okay to pay a higher split based on who's generating the lead. So get a piece of paper for me. I'm, I got I want, it. I want you to get a piece of paper. I want you to draw a line across the paper. Hang on, Draw a line across the middle of the paper. 
This was my first page. I just want you know I was taking notes. All right. Nice. Good. <laughs> uh, so draw a line across the piece of paper like this, and Got then it. draw two more lines intersecting it. So your graph should be like this. Okay. Right. On the, board. on the top, I want you to put 25, 50, 25. You see it? Yep. Got it. Underneath the first 25, you're going to put lead gen. Got it. Underneath the 50, you're going to put meat to contract. Wait, meat? Right, meat. Meat. Got it. M-E-E-T, not M-E-A-T. Supply chain disruption, we're going to have meat shortages soon. So we're not talking about that yet. In the last 25, I want you to put contract to close. So I, I break a transaction down that way. Who generated the lead? That's worth 25% of the split. Who's doing the work? That's worth 50. Who's doing the follow-up, home inspections, all that? That's worth the, the top 25. So I do believe from a, a general standpoint, you break a transaction into those parts in order to determine what kind of split that person gets it. Then the last thing, and then we'll have a minute for a question or two. Um, last thing is what I, what I talked about earlier. Think of yourself as a Weicker or a Caldwell Banker. So you're a traditional broker underneath the Keller Williams umbrella. So I have agents that put people on sliding scales, you know, where they're at 50% from zero to 2 million sales, then 60% from two to four, 70, 75. Here's the question I would challenge a team on. Hey, if you're a team, can the agent cap with you? What's the value of you? And at what point is that cap? So uh, I've got one team, uh, the cap for their, their buyer's agents are at twice what our market center cap is. Our market center cap's 35, their cap is 70. What the team makes 70,000 off of an agent, they will let the agent keep the rest of the commission. For, for those of you that know about our cap is 37, Michael's is a little bit less because he lives down in the Pine Barrens. It's, you know, houses are a lot less expensive down there somewhere <laughs> by Atlantic City. Now, for I, those of you that don't know me, I'm in Morris County, by the way, okay? I like to think of Morristown as the Pine Barrens. We're not the bustling Ridgewood. <laughs> so I, 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 I do want to break from our conversation now because we'll, we'll have some time thank each you, month. Thank you, thank you for uh, it. Was that valuable? Yeah, that's, that's really awesome. I mean, the, the only thing I would say is that I get the capping with the company, but then they would be in charge of lead genning, you know, from, from that. So, 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 so what, what that team, so first of all, even though they're at 100, if the company gives you a lead, you're still given 25% back. Got it. Okay. So That's I might cap them on my transaction to close support, but if they still want company driven leads, they still have to pay for that. Well, but what also happens is that team tracks all of the transactional expenses per agent. So they can see what they paid in flyers in photos for each individual team member. So agents that get capped, they are also responsible for their per transaction marketing costs at that point. So that's all stuff we could talk about later. I've got literally three minutes before an absolutely He's hard a boss. Stuff. If you haven't figured it out, Michael is a boss, man. <laughs> what, 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 what questions? What questions do you guys have for me? Anything I've talked about today you want to go a little deeper on? Uh, we got two minutes now. Al, anything you want me to talk about that we didn't touch on yet? Not that I can think of. The one thing I wanted to say to everyone is um, Colleen and Rasham and Alyssa are, are experts on this as well. I have to jump off for the same call that Michael's going on, but... JP, if you want to stay on and they, they can stay on, maybe they can, can finish up with you and kind of go through this. And then anybody who's interested in having an assessment like this done, please reach out to, to your team leader, you know, either right on this call, say, hey, Colleen, can we do this tomorrow or, um, or shoot an email? But I don't have any specific questions, Michael. Did you already? I, I can tell you, I've got the team leaders on a call with me once to twice a week where we're actually practicing these conversations and getting better at them. Um, what you saw here is someone that's been doing this now for 14 years with the company. So, um, you know, we, 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 we all learn, we all grow, and we're here to support you any way we can. Any other burning questions, burning desires to share you have before I exit? Thank you. That's all. If you guys could do me a favor real quick, go into the chat box, click on chat in the bottom in the chat box. Can you just put in there one aha you got from that conversation, something you learned, something you wrote down, something you took away from it. And it'll let me know that me and JP actually delivered value to you. If I can get an idea of what, what one idea you got from that conversation might be. Awesome. Any other questions for me? Thank you, Michael. Thank you guys. All right, thank you, Michael. I'll Have see you in two minutes. You, you got it. We'll see you soon. So long guys. Sally, great seeing you. Everybody loves Sally. 
I think I think Michael started the uh, the Zoom, right? So I don't think he can sign off and we can stay on. No, no, it's not. This is your Zoom okay. link. It's um, all right. Take care, if, Mike. If, if you could do me a favor, whoever's running the Zoom, can you save the chat box and email it to me? If you click those those three little buttons down the right hand corner, you can claim you can save the chat box. Um, I greatly yep. appreciate the uh, the ahas in the in the group chat. And don't don't jump off. We're going to continue this after Michael signs off. All right, later. Thanks. So, Colleen, Rachel, I'm, I'm going to jump off. Can you guys continue with JP mm -hmm. and then anybody else who wants to set this set up uh, an assessment for themselves? You got. I know Michael said he's been doing it for 12 years, so he's trying to like under promise, over deliver for you guys. But I think you can do it just as well as he can. So. Um, Hey, JP, would you be open to meeting somebody who is non-KW? Yes. Awesome. I do that a lot. I he do does that all the time. He's amazing. He really yeah. is. I have somebody who would love to, love to just sit down with you. So if you could just text me a few times, that would be awesome. Okay. Thank you, JP. That was amazing. Thanks. And JP, you and I are going to start working together a little more. I know we had talked about it, and then... You were always so busy and Sorry my life. No, I just have to di discipline myself. That's all. I, I know. To do that. Um, so I'm going to jump off. What, what else can we go? What, Colleen, can you keep going with JP? Yep. Sure, I will. Okay. Um, does anybody have any questions for JP? Look at everyone. Quiet. I, I have a question. Oh, here we so go. You, you do so much work in in uh, in New York State. Do you actually live in the Suffern, Airmont, Montebello area? So I live in Mawa, but I live so Mawa. In I lived in Suffern for let's just say twenty something years. Okay, twenty five years. All right. For me. And, oh, for you. Yeah. yeah. So uh, so for me my life has always been kind of like suffering mawa right you, we we eat there we go get gas there my my wife is from ramsey new jersey and at some point we knew that we would circle back to to bergen and it really came down when, when it was time to buy a house we just elected you know to buy the house in mawa as opposed to suffering just to escape the tax burden that we all love so very much there but but my but i didn't want to move too far because th my business is there Right. So when people say, well, I see your offices in Woodcliffe Lake, I said, I bet you I could run to your house. I live in Mawa, like just over the border. So, you know, I, that would be like telling anyone who lived in the suburbs that they couldn't work in Manhattan. It makes no sense. Right. <clears throat> okay. Plus, hopefully you're going to start really ramping up your New Jersey business. And I would love to go. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. JP, you had a request to uh, sing something. I don't know who came, who put that yeah. in the chat, but. Uh... <laughs> uh, I think it was Alyssa. <laughs> you guys I have second that, trouble. I second that. John Paul I'll Fender. end it with a song. Let's do some questions. I'm happy to do that. <laughs> oh my God, look who just joined us. Betsy, baby. Betsy, come on, Betsy. Hi, Hi Betsy. everyone. Hi, Betsy, how are you? I've been on the call all along. I'm, I, I just been quietly listening. Oh, okay, nice. Yep. When you, <laughs> you come up to the front page. Oh, I guess it's coming up. Yeah, it's it's moving up. She's coming um, from the back. So no questions. Okay. So does any is anyone on the the call? Does anyone have a team that they're functioning on or thinking about doing, or it's just a business question in general? Maybe I could help. Maybe. No. Okay. Well, how do you see, how is your business going now? Because you are doing more, obviously you're more New York than you are New Jersey and your hands are way tied. I mean, New Jersey, we can show a house, you know, one person at a time or two people, the agent and another person. You're still virtual, but you are, I mean, listen, you are in my market center. I know that you're still doing business. So how are you doing business in New York? So, um, Someone's trying to call me on Google Voice, I guess. Um, so first of all, I am, a lot of my listings are vacant. So we're opening, we're having, the, I'm going there, opening the, the doors and lights on and then allowing the agent to do it uh, and go back. I think the, it's supposed to be virtual showings, but they're really supposed to be unaccompanied showings is how right. I'm interpreting it. Mm -hmm. You know, so a lot of the times agents are going to homes 
uh, with the clients in terms of separate cars. They're driving out and then they're just talking in the driveway or kind of figuring it out. Or maybe they're on a, a Facebook Messenger video with them as they go through the home so they could point out features and stuff. That's, that's how we're, we're doing it. Um, I think it's really impossible. I can't get my wife to buy a pair of dream, jeans without trying them on. Now someone's going to buy an $800,000 home without seeing it. I don't believe it. Okay. I, <laughs> it's not happening, but we're, we're doing what we need to do to be compliant. You know, I don't allow children in the home, only decision makers, uh, gla mask, gloves, and that's what we're doing to get around it there. Do you how now? You said you had what five listings that everybody that they they thought they just wouldn't do it now. Do you think they'll be coming down the pipeline in a month or two when things change? No, no. So one of them is a um, one of them was uh, a cardiologist who's you know his his sale is is going to be a million dollar sale. His purchase is going to be a one seven in Ridgewood or uh, Upper Saddle area. So that his he's working but he's not making the money that he made so that's we're we're delayed a year another person is an elderly woman who's just like very uncomfortable with the whole process of allowing people through her home you know those are the stories that i'm getting i i am bringing other people on later like i have them scheduled for june 1st listings right but we were supposed to be on a month ago we were, documents are signed you know i waited for photos i'm actually glad because now the trees are finally starting to fill in but you know, it's, it's, we were, we were geared, we were ready. And, and you're seeing now, I mean, anyone who's working in the New York market, I'm doing both. You know, I just put something under in, in Waldwick. All right. And I got another deal offering in Mawa. So I'm getting my things back, but the, um, but the New York market, at least where I am is really beginning to pick up. There's like an exodus out of the, the boroughs that I'm starting to feel. And I haven't felt that in, up until about last week where the, the calls, I worked a full weekend. Sorry, honey, I wasn't around for Mother's Day for the majority of the day, but, and I was saying honey to my wife, I just, no one on the camera, I just want you to know, all right? I, God, um, but yeah, it's, it's happening. So that's how I'm, I'm functioning, you know. And I will also say this, for anyone who's closing or under contract on something, the municipalities are so slow in doing those, um, the violation reports that we do in New York. You guys do the smokes and the, the fire and smoke in Jersey. They are so behind where normally it would be a two or three day lead. We're talking two to two weeks, sometimes three. So just be Actually mindful. six weeks in Claxton. That's just bizarre, right? So now you know <laughs> though to function is like, we're going under contract, order it. It's $150. If your buyer doesn't want to delay the process, just spend the money, whatever it is, $100, $150 and get it done. All right. So anything else? No other questions? Your hand raised. I, I have a question real okay. quick. Hi, John Paul. Hi, I'm right there. How are you? Good. So I was curious about how has your where are you generating most of your leads from and how has that evolved over the years, especially from when you went from your $11 million business to where you are now? The big, the first jump happened just by gaining control of my leads. So when I always carry a large listing inventory, right? I'm not fortunate to be selling million dollar listings all the time, right? So my transaction count was high. And in the previous company, if you had a red light on your lead gen, right? Like, let's just say that I have, an $800,000 listing and 20 other listings or 12 other listings. But I decide to take a two hour or 90 minute listing appointment. If a lead would come in during that and I didn't respond to it in five minutes, well, guess what? It went to the next person in line within the company. Okay, so to me, that was very unfair because I was out generating new business so I shouldn't be punished for it. Give me the opportunity. And once I had those opportunities, that really grew my business, okay? Where I'm seeing a big change now is that I paid real close attention to, um, I know it sounds so bizarre, but getting reviews and making sure that those are a part of my profile uh, mm -hmm. because that just moves you up to the top. And when that happens, I get so many calls, which I've never gotten um, from strangers in the last two years. 
Like, how did you find me? Well, I looked you up here or I saw you're doing this. And then I also do, I'll share, you know, I do ad boosts, right? We all do them. But yeah. if you're doing, I don't, I, I'm, I think I'm very target. I, I'm conscious of where I target. So I'm not, if I sell a house in New City, I don't do business. I, I don't focus in New City. So I don't take my sales and I start boosting into New City. Like my market is my market. And so I draw my circle and I boost into it. And, and that's my just solds and my under contracts. If I'm doing my just listeds, then yes, I'll go out and, and target an area where I think I might be generating leads from. But in terms of telling my story, I just, I tell it as locally as I can. I have to say now though, cause you said that people are coming out of the city right now. I would be boosting everything with a 20 mile radius right. of Hoboken or we're maybe 30 mile radius of Hoboken for New York. 100%. That's where we gotta go. You gotta yep. get, you gotta get all the way from Brooklyn and around. <laughs> And no, no, it's true. It's you know, true. forget I'm, about up here. We want them from down there because that's where they're going to be coming from. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Mm -hmm. All of my showings this weekend were from um, Hoboken, mm -hmm. um, Manhattan, Manhattan West Side, Manhattan East Side, and Queens. Like I was, that's where my buyers came from. Did that answer it? Did, or did I, did I scoot around it or no? No, that's fine. I was just kidding. And where, where are you getting majority of your business from? Is there one specific or three channels that are really doing well for you? I'm going to tell you that the majority of it is from referrals and sphere. Like I don't, I know that that's crazy. I want to say that I lead gen like hardcore, like I prospect. I want to prospect so badly. I just don't do it. And I'm really bad at that. Okay. Um, but I will get there one day. That is my drunk monkey, right? I'm going to get there. But you are, but you have to call your sphere too. You have to. That's where I'm more comfortable. Okay. So and not even calling. Like I'll network. I, I like to see people. I'm a person. I, I understand, but we can't see them now. So now you're going to have to call them and check in. It's care calls. You have to do it. That's true. I'm not doing it, but I, I no, should. You, and you know what? You want, your year will be exactly what you want it to be if you just do that now. You're right. You're right. What I'm about Claudia? Claudia? I didn't mean to open up a can of worms for you to get schooled. <laughs> no, no, I like getting schooled. I love the abuse. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> I will correct that. you though. You said that you do networking, so that is lead genning. So don't be mistaken that you're not doing it. You may just not be cold calling, which is one form, but if you're networking, that's lead genning. But I'm not doing what you do. I see what you do, and you are very purposeful about it, and you do a great job with it. But I'm just, I'm trying, like, I, I love my wife. I love you, honey, but <laughs> I've gotten one lead from her in 14 years of doing business. Okay, so that is like a sad reality. So it's me who has to go out and get those friendships and those relationships. You know what I mean? And it's just, it is what it is. So that's how I try and do it. All right, so I've got to get on to a, a, another call. So how are we doing? Are we going to get a song now? Um, I don't know. Aww. Thank you. Go, Jay. Go, Jay. Go, JP. Hey. Um, Oh, let's hope I don't mess up some words. What would I, what would I do without your smart mouth? Drawing me in and you kicking me out. Got my head spinning, no kidding. I can't pin you down. What's going on in that beautiful mind? I'm on your magical mystery ride. And I'm so <laughs> dizzy, don't know what hit me, but I'll be all right. My head's under water, but I'm breathing fine. Said you're crazy and I'm out of my mind. Is that good? You know what? It makes me almost brings tears to my eyes because I remember last red last year on Red Day when you were singing to the the people at Sunrise and how they yeah. loved it so much. I love that. No, I, I know we can't do that this year. Oh my god, I loved her. 
<laughs> JP, okay. thank you so much. I well, really for hanging out with me. Everybody. I appreciate it was, you. It was awesome. All right. If you ever need anything, you guys know how to find me. I miss you. I miss having you I next to you. me. Oh my god. I miss everybody. I'm, Thanks, I'm, JP. I'm an extrovert, right? That that saying that went around Facebook. It said like introverts check in on your extrovert friends. They don't know how this works. They don't know how any of this works. No. Check in on me. <laughs> I will. All righty. Take care, guys. Thank you. Ciao.